All right, guys, welcome back to MMA on Hinge. Today we're joined by our first ever interview guest, Brad Pickett. Once again, thank you very much for joining, and uh, we appreciate your time. So, h- how's your day been? Uh, good, busy, uh, always busy, but back back to a normal schedule now. I'm back in the UK, so coaching the team. Back to reality. Yes, exactly. Uh, so we'll start from the start. When did you, or Nathaniel, where were perhaps was you when you received the call that you were going to be fighting on Fight Island? To be honest, I can't exactly remember. Um, I know we were trying to get on Fight Island. Um, so I kind of, we were told, obviously, all the European fighters will, will be fighting there. So we kind of knew it was going to happen. We just were waiting for an opponent sort of thing. And then we got an opponent... Then that opponent got uh, injured and had a replacement. So we kind of knew for some time we were fight, going to go fight Ireland and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Uh, so when you found out that Umar uh, kind of uh, pulled out of the fight and then John stepped in, did that kind of throw a little spanner in the works? One, one second, sorry. Nick, I'm just doing an interview. Uh, where are you? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Just then, please. Thank you. Two, two please. Two. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry. Sorry. A busy man, you see. Yeah, that's what happens when you're Brad Pickett. Exactly. Uh, so when we're going back uh, to the question, did you kind of get the question? No, I mean, re- repeat again, please. Uh, so, so when, uh, when did you know when you found out when Uma pulled out of the fight and then John stepped in? Did that kind of throw like a little spanner in the works that you had to kind of prepare and watch another guy and prepare for another guy and get Nathaniel prepared for another guy? Nah. Reason I say this was like it's the same thing when I was fighting in my, in my career, uh, and the fans were the same. You train for a date, and whatever opponents there, there really isn't. We they're always. This, it's not like boxing in this sport opponents change all the time there's so many more variables within the sport that get injured so you just kind of like go okay this is the guy I'm fighting cool I look at this and you do work on certain things don't get me wrong but you're also very prepared for it to change because it does a lot so it wasn't much of a shock that he changed it was obviously very sad news uh, uh, why he did pull out um, but but you know business is business and uh um, we actually, we got like I, I got sent a list of people to uh, uh, on the list, and I looked at everyone. And uh, for me, I thought John would be a, a good fight because he was one of the most experienced guys of the replacements. Uh, and I thought stylistically, he, he was very beatable for the final stars. I still think he's a great fighter, and he probably showcased a great fight. But for me, stylistically, he was a, a good matchup for, for the final fight. Yeah, definitely showed his uh, toughness in that fight versus Nathaniel. Exactly, yeah. He could, he could take a punch. <laughs> so how did Nathaniel feel and look heading into the fight? Yeah, I mean, obviously the same sort of thing. is in like, um, all these, you get nervous, you get a bit anxious, cuts a lot of weight, you know, that's miserable and stuff like that. Uh, but kind of, there's no... Not much different to normal. I felt a little bit more nerves maybe this time. Obviously, coming off a loss, you know, you kind of really want to get back in the win column as quick as possible, you know, because at the end of the day, you could be an entertaining fight, but this is a winning, winning sport. The next one, then you lose three, in the, three on the trot, maybe uh, set on your way. So, um, obviously... He did not want that to happen. So you, you, you do get a lot of anxiety and nerves and stuff like that. Uh, but he handled it all very, very well and he, he performed on Saturday night and he's back in the winning column. So uh, I could definitely see there be another skip in his step coming come into his next fight. So we kind of recapped this earlier that uh, when you're fighting for someone, you just get told a date and then you, you just get prepared and get ready for a fight. But was there, was there anything that you worked on in particular with Nathaniel ready for this fight? Um, not really different because uh, luckily this is also another reason I chose John because he was a southpaw as well so we were training for a southpaw and the, the southpaw stayed the same so the things we worked on did work on him uh, I, I found that John was a lot more flat-footed than Umar was 
So the inside low kicks and the kick and the bangers kicks can work really well against him. Uh, and, and, and he did, and he performed very, very well. So he didn't change too much. You know, he, he wasn't that far out, if that makes sense. So it's not as if, like, we had to change loads. Um, for the performance, we was fine. Umar, we brought in some people like Dean Garnett and Mokhaev uh, to help with the wrestling side of things. But then, uh, you know, then the opponent changed. To, for me, John's a wrestler, but not on that sort of level of um, Umar's sort of level of wrestling. Uh, so Nathaniel Wood came back to the UK with a win, and uh, he most importantly in that fight he showed a lot of control. He controlled uh, John a lot of a lot in that fight. He dictated where the fight kind of went. Did, uh, how would you describe Nathaniel Wood's uh, performance on that night? It was very professional. Uh, I, I, in a strange way, I think there being no crowd definitely helped him listen to the corner a lot more, and we and we was able to rein him in sometimes. But sometimes he gets a little bit excited and gets involved, and like, hey. No need to do that. You're winning the fight, looking good in, in the fight. Uh, there's no need to get make it uh, roll the dice as much. You know, you're winning, looking comfortable, uh, and stuff like that. So that that that's so. I think having the audience there definitely helped us be able to communicate with him a lot more. Uh, so Nathaniel Wood getting the win against John on the on the weekend was that the perfect scenario for Nathaniel Wood to come back? Indeed, you know, what other scenario could have been better? You know, like. Uh, maybe you could have got a finish, but you know, wins a win. You know, sometimes yeah. you can get a win by hook or by hook. So it couldn't be any, no injuries as well. He's he's fine, so he's not injured. So yeah, but for me, it was perfect. The has got a bright future ahead of him in the 135 pound division, and most importantly, he's got you guiding him to head to the title. Where where can the final would take this, and where could he go in the future? He's a, I mean, like he's a very, very talented kid. And he has a very yeah. great work ethic, work ethic as well. Um, so he's one of those ones that in this sport. Sometimes this can be about who turns up on what nights, you know. Uh, but um, I, I think Nathaniel ha- has the potential to uh, get into the top ten, hundred uh, percent now, even now, and then you know get a few more wins under his belt, get that confidence step back again, which uh, which I believe is getting there. Uh, and then hopefully we get in uh, to our contention. As you kind of mentioned earlier, that John was more of a tough fight for John, uh, for Nathaniel. Did, did you when um, Umar stepped out and John came in? Do you think it was a, a better fight for Nathaniel more stylistically? Yes, Umar was a, was a, was a tough opponent, you know, uh, especially. Um, but he had a lot of hype around him, obviously being uh, Khabib's cousin and stuff like that. But uh, there wasn't a lot of. Or I'd say holes in within his game. Uh, he had good movement and all that sort of stuff. But um, with, with John, I did see some. I also I saw John taking on Sean Ice, so, so he wasn't really, really. You know what I mean, like he said he was in shape and stuff, but he done well to make the weight. But uh, I think I, I just think the odds were going to be a lot more stacked in our favour against John. Uh, so when uh, when they came to fight day, was that the, uh, the performance that you expected from John? And how he came out? He was tougher than I expected, you know, because the, 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 he did take a lot of damage, but he did, yeah. look, he, didn't, he did look very good. He made it, for me, Nathaniel won the whole fight, but it was very, he was still competitive. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a, he uh, didn't smash and start to finish it. He won every round in my eyes, but it was a competitive fight. For me, John showcased that, uh, that he does belong within the UFC, and I do believe he will do, go on and do do well within the sport. So we'll move on to a more pleasing uh, subject, a more uh, less stressful subject. So how was it? How did it feel uh, driving around the F1 track? That was quite fun. It was it was good to, just to, to do something, to get outside, get out of the hotel room, sort of thing, and do something different. Uh, no, no, that was fun. I, I I enjoyed that. You know, yeah, that's definitely definitely uh, wanted to uh, take away from my memories. You know, it was a good one. What was the experience like going over to Fight Island to corner one of your fires? It was strange, completely strange. It's hard to explain. It was like weird. I mean, like it wasn't. I've been involved in many fight weeks within competing and also coaching, and it was just so strange. Just like 
Yeah, it, it was hard to explain how strange it was. You kind of felt you used to still segregate from everyone. There was people like, I didn't even know on fire and that I saw on the plane on the way home. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know you were here. So you kept <laughs> away from everyone sort of thing. And yeah. then you were on fight day, you get taken to the venue, you fight and you take straight back to your room. So it's like you don't even kind of, you don't even stay there and watch the rest of the fights. It literally was just it. It was it was like a like a business transaction. There was no like personal sort of jazz to it. You know, you didn't go fist bump the, the fans or whatever. Like there was no. It, so it was a strange experience. But look back in hindsight, it, it was pretty cool. Did you enjoy it? Yes, definitely. Yeah, but I was away. For, I would wait for a little bit longer than I wanted to be. It was like, and then there'd be, I was waiting for, because you have to have loads of tests before you go and quarantine in a room. And I understand all that with the UFC uh, and the measures they did to make it safe, which is brilliant, but it didn't, it made it for a long, I was away for like 12 days, you know, which is made it pretty long. We're normally only away for like six days, sort of thing. Yeah, so it felt good to come back to the UK. Yes, obviously I miss my kids and I also I've got other people are here I'm, I'm coaching, I've got fires coming up so I, I don't I, I, with everyone was still training, I, I had training still set up while I was away uh, but it's, yeah, it, it's good to get back and uh, get back to the team uh, So last time we spoke uh, we didn't really have an update for Rise of Champions do we have re- Do we have an update now for Rise of Champions when it could possibly return? Um, I'm waiting to uh, open my own gym at the moment I, I'm using oh, some yeah. of- we're using someone else's facilities. Uh, that is my main focus and my, my main my main drive. Once that's up and running, I will be rising chaps in the back. It's just on hold at the moment because running a show like that takes a lot of, a lot of my time up. Which obviously at the moment I'm a little bit uh, I have my hands tied. I'm, I'm I'm spinning too many plates. So that's one plate yeah. I that put put down for one moment until uh, the time's right. Uh, so, have you found? Have you? Are you still? Are you still looking for a gym? Is there anything that uh, you like? Has you found any gym that maybe you could possibly move into, sort of thing? Yeah, so I found the. Uh, I found the place that before lockdown happened, I kind of verbally agreed. Uh, it was looking all good, but then Corona decided to come around, uh, and it kind of put things on the on the back burner. Which, in in, my, in hindsight, is probably a blessing because if I if I if I had. Uh, um, close the deal. I'd be paying for an empty premises. So, so I'm glad it didn't happen. So, I'm waiting now for it to all to rekindle. And we're still we're in chats now, but we're just waiting to see where the land lies. Where it's no point me opening a, a, a big a gym when I can't have students. You feel me? Yeah. So when Rise of Champions does come back, are you going to have like commentators there? Or are you going to be? Uh, is it going to be? On, are you going to try and get maybe a TV deal? Because I remember uh, I tried to watch it and you told me that was on TV. I couldn't really watch it live. Um, before it was on, it was on UFC Fight Pass. Oh, that's it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so it was on UFC Fight Pass, and I know I'll probably go back down that route, uh, avenue when I bring you back up, up and running. Yeah. Do you have commentators? Maybe Brian Lacey and you. Uh, I would never commentate on my own show because I'm too busy uh, running everything, but. Uh, Brian Lacey commentated on my last show, yeah, so yeah, I always have commentators there, and Brian Lacey will be there as well. Got to shoot my shot, you know, I'll be available. Okay, all right, no worries. Yeah, you right. know where I am, you got my number. All right. <laughs> nah. Hear me up near the time. Yeah, yeah, I could do anything you want, post-fight interviews, commentary interviews, yeah, I could do anything you want. No worries, come down. I, I could be your own personalised Joe Rogan. Okay, okay. No way. Got to shoot your shot, right? Of course you have. Of course yeah. you have. But I say, the show's not there at the moment. Yeah. yeah I may have to wait until it comes back. Oh, that's fine by me. Opportunity is an opportunity. Of course. Of course. When it comes, you've got to grab it. Indeed, my friend. All right, so we'll move we'll on to the last question. So in an ideal world, where would you want, uh, Where would who would you like Nathaniel Wood to fight next? A fight that should have, should have happened by now is kind of like weird that it hasn't. Uh, I don't know if the UFC know how to write stories and uh, make <laughs> real things. He should yeah. find Cheeto Vera. Like, for me, it just makes so much sense for, for, for where they both are within their careers. Uh, and just the story behind it all just, just makes sense. So, for me, I'm going to keep saying until I'm blue in the face, Cheeto Vera is the person you should find. 
Yeah, he recently got matched up by a really, really hard test against Sugar Sean O'Malley. And uh, we, there was a little uh, back and forth between Achita Vera and uh, Nathaniel Wilson. I'm quite disappointed that fight didn't go through and they, they're not fighting because it's a really, really tough fight on paper. You know, they're both really, really tough 135 pounders. And I would love to see that fight. It's a good story. You know, I, I, I believe Nathaniel wins that fight, you know. So, like, yeah. So, <laughs> if I just compare it to me, and, you know, I was beating him every part of that round. I just got caught at the end, which shows why. It's good for me to like. No, I can't continue within the sport, but I want Nathaniel to revenge, uh, avenge our loss. <laughs> Is that you want Nathaniel to come back and uh, avenge your loss? Exactly. Yeah. I it's mean, a good story behind it all, you know. You're you're minutes away from getting that victory. Yes, I was. I know. But yeah, it's, it shows it's not a fairy tale uh, sport, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the for, your, for the interview and most importantly your time. You are our first ever guest on MA Unhinged, and we've gone on to do incredible things since you. You know, we got Mike Grundy in, we got Nathan, uh, Nathaniel Wood on twice, uh, Lorraine Murphy, we got Fabian Edwards, we even got Mark Hunt the other week, and uh, so we've been, we've we've gone to incredible things since you, and it all started from you. So I just got to thank you so so much. No problem, man. I'm, I'm one of those guys. I, I like to help out where I can. Thank you so much for your time, Brad. All right, thank you. Cheers, thank you.